I don't know about you, but I love a good mini ITX build. There's just something really satisfying about cramming a full gaming setup into such a small footprint. And when it's done right, they look amazing. But building one that looks good and performs well without breaking the bank isn't easy. ITX cases are often overpriced, especially the clean and modern ones, fans and coolers that match even worse. And lately, RAM prices have quietly started climbing up again, especially DDR4, which doesn't help either. So for this build, I wanted to try something different. I set out to build a high-performance ITX PC that still looks great, but without spending more than I needed to. After running into a wall with prices on the usual sites, I turned to AliExpress, and I think I pulled off something pretty solid. Let me walk you through what I put together. Alright, so first up, when it comes to an ITX build, the most important part is definitely the case. A lot of the popular ones out there will run you anywhere from $150 to $200, and that can be even before adding a PCIe riser cable, which some of them do require. After digging through AliExpress, I landed on something that looked premium without the premium price tag, the Deepcool CH160. It cost me about $90 shipped, and what makes it perfect for this build is that it fits a standard height air cooler and doesn't need our PCI riser cable. That alone saves a chunk of money, plus it's got a built-in handle. And sure, I'm not hitting up LAN parties anymore, but come on, it just looks sick. For the CPU, I already had a 5800X3D on hand. These days, the price on both the 57 and the 5800X3D has crept up quite a bit as stock is drying up. They're commonly found around $250 to $300 now, which kind of takes away the whole best value angle that they used to have. Back when the 5700X3D was regularly under $180, it was an easy recommendation. These days, if you're buying new, I'd probably look at the Ryzen 5 9600X instead. Paired with a value-focused B650 board, you'd probably get similar gaming performance for a little less money. For the motherboard, I'm using the ASRock B550M ITX. This one is $100 brand new, which is kind of a steal for an ITX board. Usually ITX boards are way up there in price just because of the form factor, but this one has everything I need and it didn't burn a hole in my wallet. For the GPU, I went with the Intel Arc B580 Limited Edition. It's $250 brand new and one of the best bang for the buck GPUs out there right now. It's excellent for 1080 and can even hold its own in 1440 with upscaling. I think it's one of the best choices in this price range without going up to the four to $500 range. Now for the RAM, this is where I really started to appreciate AliExpress. Prices for 32 gigabyte DDR4 kits on Amazon have been climbing lately, with most decent kits sitting around $70 to $90. I felt like that was very high, so I scoured AliExpress and managed to find a 32 gigabyte DDR4 3200 CL16 kit from KingBank for just $45. It works perfectly, no issues, running at full speed. This was one of the biggest wins for the budget here. Power supply wise, I snagged an open box EVGA 700BR for $35 at Best Buy. It's not modular or SFX, so cable management was, let's say, a process, but for the price, it was worth it. SFX units with the same wattage are three times the cost right now, and since this case fits a full-size PSU, I just went for it. For fans, I found some really nice looking white RGB ones with forward and reverse spinning options, and they have this really slick infinity mirror design on the front. They look way more expensive than they are. I got two of these for $10, so they're five bucks each. They've been running quiet and smooth, and they definitely add to the premium aesthetic of the build. It's one of my favorite finds on AliExpress. And for the CPU cooler, I picked up the Upsiren Walrus Assassin 90. <laughs> yeah, that's actually the name. It's a white air tower cooler with four heat pipes and a digital display on the front, and it only costs 27 bucks. Performance has been solid and the aesthetic fits the build perfectly. For storage, I snagged a used Solidime P41 2 terabyte M2 SSD for about 75 bucks. All in, this build came out under a grand at $945. And for a mini ITX rig that looks this clean and performs this well, I'm super happy with how it turned out. It definitely shows how far a budget can go if you're willing to dig a little deeper and look outside the usual spots. With all the parts ready, it was time to start building. I began by dropping the 5800X3D into the motherboard and locking it into the socket. Then I removed the M2 heatsink, installed the Solidime P41 2TB SSD, and reattached the heatsink once it was seated properly. Next up was the King Bank DDR4 RAM. I snapped them into place and the silver finish actually matched the motherboard pretty nicely. 
To get into the case, I used a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the side and top panels, giving me full access to the internals. I started by mounting the PSU. The CH160 comes with a power cable extender that plugs into the PSU and routes out the back of the case so you can plug your power cable in like normal to that. Then I installed the motherboard. There are four standoffs that line up with the holes in the motherboard. I used four fasteners to secure it to the case. After that, I removed the stock CPU cooler brackets from the motherboard and swapped them out for the ones included with the cooler. The cooler the cooler also came with a little tube of thermal paste, so I plopped that right on there. I started seating the cooler, but I realized it'd be smarter to install the case fans first. So I mounted the intake fan to the rear of the case and installed the reverse blade fan on top as an exhaust. Once those were in, I went back and mounted the CPU cooler. The fans in the cooler all have convenient daisy chain connectors for RGB and fan power, so wiring was pretty simple. I daisy chained the lighting for the cooler and the fans and put it into the three pin header on the motherboard. Then I plugged the cooler into the CPU fan header and daisy chained the case fans into the system fan header. Next, I connected the front panel connectors, the power button, USB, and audio. This motherboard doesn't have a header for the front panel USB-C, so that port on the case is non-functional, but it does have a USB-C on the rear I.O., so it's not a huge deal. After that, I somehow managed to squeeze the GPU in between the mess of PSU cables. It would have been so much easier if the PSU was SFX or modular or both. It's not my best work in terms of wire management, but I made it work. And again, for a budget focus build, I'm not complaining. I think it still ended up looking great. Then I connected the last few power cables for the CPU, motherboard, and GPU, and tried to tuck everything away as cleanly as possible. After I finished the build, I actually went in and redid the placement of the cables, so it looks a little cleaner. Final step was reattaching the panels. Top panel goes on first, then the two sides. Oh yeah, and somehow I lost the IO shield for this board. I looked everywhere and I just could not locate it. So let's just say I left it off for the extra airflow. Um, yeah, that's my story. Once everything was in place, I hit the power button and it booted up. I just sat back and admired the final result for a minute. I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's got high end aesthetics and it packs a lot of punch in that little space. After powering it up, I went ahead and installed a fresh copy of Windows 11, and then I jumped into the BIOS to get everything dialed in. I enabled XMP to get the KingBank RAM running at its rated 3200 CL16. On AM4, you want to synchronize the F-Clock, U-Clock, and M-Clock, so I set the F-Clock to 1600 manually. For the 5800X3D, I disabled SMT to help with gaming performance, and added a minus 30 undervolt using Curve Optimizer under PBO. And since we're running an Intel Arc GPU, I double checked that resizable bar was enabled. At idle, the system is super quiet, the fans are barely audible, the Walrus Assassin cooler keeps the CPU sitting around 48 degrees Celsius, and the Arc B580 was idling right around 50. In game, CPU temps hovered in the mid 70s. It's not bad, though I was expecting it to be a little bit lower. It might be that the included thermal paste is a little bit lower quality. I don't know. I might repaste it later with something like Cryofuse or just a fan curve, but for now, it's well within the safe limits. GPU temps hovered around the 60s, which is great, and just an overall really solid showing from the Intel card. I tested the build in Tarkov at 1440 using FSR3 in balanced mode. I used my Pure 70 graphics preset with medium textures. The 5800X3D does the heavy lifting here, but the Arc B580 really held its own. On Lighthouse, I was averaging between 120 to 130 FPS. The gameplay felt buttery smooth the entire time. The experience was really good have no complaints about it. Then I ran a raid on streets and saw an average of around 90 FPS, sometimes a little higher in the lighter areas and dropping a bit in heavier zones like Lexos or Klimov. But all in all, for the price of the build, I was seriously impressed with how well it ran. Oh, and a quick heads up, this exact build is up for sale on Jawa right now. So if you like how it turned out and just want to pick it up ready to go, I've linked the listing in the description. If you're thinking about building this rig or something similar, I've dropped the full parts list in the description with links to everything I used. And that's all I got for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found it helpful, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel. It helps out a ton and helps me keep making more videos like this. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.